Hey, what's up everybody? Good morning. Happy Friday. It's the weekend time. Starting a little bit late here. I want to start at 8.30. Going forward, I do want to start at 8.30. Sometimes the kids get in the way. That's what happens. But we're live 8.30. So let's talk about what's happening uh, market-wise. We've got some news. Pinterest, City price target increased $30. Okay, going to be interested in what PINS is doing right now. It's trading at 22.20. That's really good upside from here. We've got Uber. JP Morgan starts an overweight and 51 price target 39 percent upside uber has got my attention i'm feeling like you know what maybe i'm just gonna just grab uber in a swing account and leave some shares in there and let it mature over time i think uber is a good buy from this range uh jp morgan agrees general electric sees upside 16 dollar price target we're gonna check out ge was requested today paypal got upgraded to a buy target as well so we're gonna get into all those tickers that are requested vff real Weed, of course, weed, CGC will always cover. And NBC, GE, Yang, Crowd, BTC, USD, Maxar, and Rad. So happy Friday, everybody. Hope you guys are going to have a great weekend. It's a Super Bowl weekend. Hey, community, thinking about doing some squares. So I'll send out a message in the community, and we'll talk about, hey, if anybody wants to participate and have some fun for a Super Bowl weekend. Who's your pick, 49ers or the Chiefs? Okay, so looking at futures here, wow, this is like choppy action. So we saw the huge move yesterday. So we've been, this is, you know, this is exactly what I say. You don't want your account to look like, right? You don't want your account to look like this. Now, let's talk about that, right? So you see your account, when you see your account make the big move to the upside, you know, you got euphoria, you're feeling so good, you, th you think trading so easy, the stock market's simple again. And then you see this, and then you start to get depressed on yourself. So your emotions up over here are, are in the 80 range, right? Can't really draw an 80 so well with this. Your, mo your emotions up here, you're in the 80 range, and then you start to come back down, and now your emotions are in the 20 range, right? So you're not feeling good. Over here, trading was simple. It was easy. Everything was going up, and I'm just looking at this as an account dollar figure right like your account's going up you're at a hundred thousand your account comes back down you're at fifty thousand your account goes back up you're at hundred and ten thousand and now it starts to come back up this is what i talk about right when you want your account to make those higher lows and higher highs but this right here this point right here is your maximum financial trading stress right right or wrong like if you're watching this video uh, I'd like to hear some feedback about that. So it's easy to say, right? You want your account to do this, right? The nice higher lows, you don't want your account to do this scenario because when you get to this scenario, you're so high, you're so euphoric, you don't think anything's gonna go wrong and then you get down and you're negative again, right? And you're feeling depressed. Now you start to go back up and you, you got it all figured out and then here you go. You have an opportunity right now. You have an opportunity to make a higher high or you have an opportunity to make you know, come back down, potentially make a lower low. That's the difficult part of trading at this part. And this is the most difficult part in your trading. When you get to that range, when you get to that dip, how do you trade? Okay, so here you go. Now at this point, you're gonna do one of two things. You're gonna come back down or you're gonna make that a higher low and go up. Your decision making at this point right over here is the most important part of your trading. It's your decision making. Here's what happens. Most people at this point right over here, because they're starting to lose some money, you know, they had 100K in their account and now they're, you know, 75, 80, and they're thinking I lost 20, they're thinking I lost that money. And a couple of things happen here. At this point, they get too loose, right? You get too loose, we get too loose. We're like, okay, just lost three trades in a row. I see a nice trade here, boom, I'm gonna go for it and you go oversize, you start taking a, a setup that's not an A plus setup anymore, and it's wrong, and then boom, you break down, and then you're back to, oh no, I just gave back all, all the last six weeks of profits, I just gave it back, because I got too loose over here, right? Or, what happens, another alternative is, you come to this range, and what happens? You get too tight, you get too tight, you're like, you're scared. You don't want to lose money, right? You don't want to lose money. And so at this point, you start taking less trades. And then what happens is, because you start taking less trades, a beautiful trade goes, and you would have taken this, 
you would have got this, but you miss it because you're too conservative right now because you're too tight because you're scared about this. And what happens when you miss that trade, you regret and then you're on, you know, you're not psychologically well balanced anymore because you missed a great opportunity because you got too tight. And then the next trade you take is right here. And that's what happens. And this is what happens to people having the S curve. So my advice, my solution is that you just follow your behaviors. You follow the behaviors that are making you successful. You read the charts, you take the A plus setups. And what is an A plus setup? Okay, not everything's gonna be so identifiable as an A plus setup, but you don't take crappy setups anymore. You don't take charts that are oversold, that are trending low, making lower lows. You stop taking those trades, right? You keep your stop losses in play. You don't get loose, never get loose. Getting loose means you're, you're going th towards the sprint mindset and you're not doing the marathon mindset anymore. So when you get to this point here, you just stick to what you're doing, right? And if you just stick to what you're doing and you stick to the good behaviors like we talk about, right? All the good behaviors that we talk about and we teach. When you get to this point, it does not mean you're going to go up. It does not mean you're going to go up, right? It could absolutely continue that, hey, because you know the trade didn't work out, market, coronavirus, whatever, you do come back down here and it was a bad trade. And don't let it, don't let it discourage you, just stick to your method, stick to your, be disciplined. Don't change anything because when markets are favorable and charts are good and you do that every time, this will happen. And eventually, yes, you're going to have this. It's going to happen. But don't change your behavior once you get to that point. Don't get too loose because, hey, I'm up 30K in the last month. I'm going to go for it on this one trade. Don't get too loose because you're going to regret that. And don't get too tight because when you get too tight, then you're not doing the things that made you successful. Now you're being scared. You're, you're, you're being scared to trade. You know, you're having fear, fear of losing money, not fear of missing out, fear of losing money. Don't change your behaviors. Okay, moving on. So futures market, that's what we're seeing right here, right now. We're seeing that dip. What's it going to be? Is it going to be a higher low and a higher high, or are we going to see another S curve here? So we were starting good. We were a little bit green last night. And now we dipped a little bit of dip buying taking place here. Yesterday we saw dip buying at the bell. Previous day we saw dip buying at the bell as well. We've been seeing the dip buying at the bell from weakness in the futures market. So let's be aware of that. Overall, S&P 500 will be in an equilibrium with this lower open. So we're going to watch these key levels here. Let's go to the daily chart. Check it out. Daily chart. Check it out right over here. Boom. And oh, wrong tool. Let's get this. So we got our low. So we have our high, all time high. Our low, 322. We have our and I don't got the magnet on, so let's just fix this. Apologies, guys. Bear with me. So we have our lower high up over here at 328. And yesterday we were marching towards that range, but as of right now, we're gonna open up as an inside bar, okay? We're gonna open up as an inside bar. So first level we're gonna wanna watch to see is if we could break that 327.91. You can see here in the hourly uh, extended hours, we're, tr we're opening up right over here now in the 326 range. So we will have an inside bar today to start at least. So let's watch out for that. Let's get into the ticket request. Of course, we're gonna start off with CGC here. And important day, it's the last day of the monthly candle. There is a decent upper wick on the monthly candle. I do not like the monthly candle as it is. Too much of an upper wick, spinning top candlestick, you know. It leads us to believe that next month is going to be an inside bar or that we're going to be looking for a higher low on the monthly next month. That's not what we want. So we want to see if they could come in and save the monthly candle. As of right now, it's a flat open. A little bit interesting last night. There was some more trading taking place overnight than we've seen before, but it hasn't manifested into anything this morning. So watching this trend line, we want to break our high, 2440. 2440, very key level to break. We have this lower trend line. If we do not break that, we're going to get a little bit tighter and we could potentially come into the apex of this little little pattern we got going over here into next week. And that could take us to February 5th. So let's look at the levels on weed because I know a lot of my followers are watching weed here. And why do I got that line drawn like that? Let's just check it out here. Take off extended hours. Yeah, it's not really anything notable here. Let's take this off. So we got our support at 3050. Ultimately, we want to come up and break these resistances. First one we want to break is 3166. And ultimately, if we break 3166, we're going to break that upper trend line that's pushing us down. Then we want to break that 3219. Those are the levels to be watching today for a break. WWE is gapping down 33%. 
this morning. Wow. So what happened to the world wrestling entertainment? Uh, sudden resonation of George Berrios and Michelle Wilson. Okay, so Oversoul Bounce coming on that name eventually. VFF. Let's check out VFF here. And it is doing what? Let's check it out. I didn't check this out yesterday. Okay, so we bounced right off of the wedge, falling wedge. We bounced right off of it. Let's cl clear this up and make this nice and visible. So we bounced right off of the falling wedge, long-term panic. Pet pattern and now we set up a lower high over here at 580 yesterday we set up a higher low that is great beautiful higher low 537 now key range we've got to come up and break this 580 range let me see what it's bidding here on the u.s side right now 547 547 596 so it's a widespread it doesn't have a lot of liquidity so 537 key level now must hold we need to break 580 to get a little bit of a trend change and it does look like potentially we've got an inverse head and shoulders here on this chart Yes, we do. So you can see that here, nice inverse head and shoulders. Let's tighten this up here and let's draw it out for you so you could take a look and let's get these tools working here. I mean, ultimately you could draw it from there and you got your head and let's see, let's draw it with a line chart. Okay, let's draw it with a line chart so we can see exactly where they likely want to trigger this from. And yeah, I mean, you could say right from here here and then drop it down here perfect so really if you get a close over 560 today if you get a close over 560 you're going to break this inverse head and shoulders however it is on the hourly and ultimately we want to break 580 for the daily trend that's what i'd be watching on vff let's check out what kind of volume has been coming into this name recently here and i want to see it and volume is very low okay volume is very low right now we're still trading under the cloud here so we're still trading under the cloud. We're trading under the 50. 50 is acting as resistance. So volume isn't really there. We need to see a nice spike in bull volume. See this kind of bull volume we got here on that original break. Now we've got a back test. We want to see a spike in bull volume. You can see the volume is completely tapering off on VFF. All right, let's check out we real. Cup and handle, resistance, back test has bearish divergence played out let's check out real here on the canadian side okay so i think uh this bearish divergence is definitely not played out okay new low new low some strength here let me just double check this here no, there is some bearish divergence on this chart okay it's very clear there's some significant bearish divergence um and that's likely why it's seen some pressure here. Oh, there's this earnings as well. I don't know if earnings is impacted here. It is still strong though. It's outside the upper bond band. It's still on top of the UBB. It wicked off of it slightly yesterday. So it could take a long time to play out, but it could continue to ride up the upper bond band. Let's look at this. This had a weekly cup and handle, right? And did it break to a new all time high? It did not. Okay, it did break the handle. It did break the handle. So it got follow through already on the handle. That's beautiful. You can see the weekly. There, there was bullish divergence and now there's some bearish divergence as well. You know, I wouldn't really look at that too much on this chart. I don't think it, let me see here, the volume, yeah, the volume is pretty good. I would just say, just play the trend, really focus on the trend here. It broke out, it got a nice move on the breakout. You got your support at 1268. It's seen some resistance up here before all time high. So, you know, 15 is the all time high level. It is outside the upper Bollinger Band. You know, it could continue to hold that level and grind up. Let's see what it looked like yesterday on the hourly chart. So it looks like there was earnings, gap up earning, gap up on earnings, consolidation. We didn't leave a gap behind though, right? No gap behind, so the gap is filled. Beautiful, first day of consolidation after a gap up earning, near all time highs. This is still looking really good here. I'd be watching this range, see if it holds, 1382. If it doesn't hold, then be patient and wait for a back test at that 1345 level. Overall, chart is looking really good. Let's look at this here on the line chart. It looks like you got a little bit of a support trend line here acting as well so i'd be watching this and it looks like looks like it actually comes up a little bit higher right there you could be watching for the back test of this level and there's also another one if it's going to be extremely strong you watch it from this level right here that level 
Okay, and you know, you could say, hey, be careful on a head and shoulders pattern shaping up here. So if we do come back to this trend line, you're gonna wanna hold it. If you don't, then you gotta be concerned that you do have a head and shoulders pattern taking place right now on real, and that will be your neckline. You wanna hold this as support and then come up and break your resistance. Weed, we already did weed. So essentially, big day today, you know, big day today. It's been, it's been tight in this range. slightly higher open right now not a lot of volume there's 20,000 shares not much happening it'd be great if somebody else could make a move that way it'd help lift weed too but nobody's dropping any bullish news there's no bullish news out there nothing great nothing significant um, it's going to be all about the technicals and do they want to have a little bit of a lower wick on the monthly candlestick for weed or not let's check out space here so I'm holding space, I got that entry, I'm, I'm gonna be patient with it. Uh, I wanna see what the chart's gonna do. Looking at this right now, and you know, doji, so doji top, doji bottom. So we should start to come back up to the upside, right? That's what we wanna see right now. Hourly chart, very important here, that we break this channel. We got a falling channel, we need to break this level. As of right now, what are we trading at? We close yesterday 17.10. And we're closing we're trading a little bit down right now 17 so nothing significant we got our support here now this is a key support level if we lose this support level here you might as well stop out might as well stop out of the original entry unless you're okay with it and it's a small enough size that you're going to be comfortable that your second thought your second entry into this trade is going to be a good size that you're not too worried about it ultimately we want to hold 1561 but right now personally i want to hold 1658 this would be the most bullish case hold 1658 break this trend line confirm the doji downside to the downside reversal like a morning star and then we start heading back up and we tighten up the daily equilibrium so really that's what i want i want to tighten up the daily equilibrium which which basically looks like this right so let's remove this we got our top we got our top we got our low we got our high, lower high, we got our higher low. So we continue to tighten in this range. And then, you know, maybe we come up today, we set up a lower high again, we set up a higher low, and then we look for that big bull break. And if we are wrong and it's a bear break, we stop out and we move on to the next trade. That's what I'm gonna be watching. That's what I wanna see. Let's watch that hourly channel. So I'm bringing up all the tools here, because, uh, all my drawings, because I don't wanna lose this hourly channel. This is the big part. We wanna see a break of this. So essentially today, a break of you know 737 and a close over it would be a break of the channel you know we got resistance right up over here at 1717 a little bit of resistance at 1735 that's that'll be the initial break of the channel if we could break 1735 and then we want to close over it remember you could pierce below the channel but it's where you close right like go to the line chart it's where you close it's if we want to close outside of it on a break. Let's see today, markets sound looking too good, right? To start, let's see if that's gonna have a factor. If the market sells off today, it's not gonna be good for a lot of tickers out there. We don't wanna see that. We wanna see bulls buying the dip early in the market to give some confidence to equities. NNVC, NNVC here, NNVC, NNVC. Well, I should put two N's. Okay, here we go. So I, this must be a low float ticker, pharmaceutical. Yeah, 3 million shares. Okay, so super low float, super intense. Let's check it out here. Whoa, huge volatility right now. Okay, huge volatility right now. So one of those scenarios where you see the huge move to the upside, well, it's actually, wow, look at this. Like that's a dirty move here. Look where it closed, look where it opened. Okay, close at 850, open at 380. That's a 50% lower open not even a gap down 50 percent lower open the next day extreme volatility that's what happens with you know tickers that are three million shares that's micro floats so you know you do got a double top right over there 12.99 has it broken it here in the pre-market and let's look at that yes it's moving hard on the pre-market so it's broken to new highs so obviously some more news here yeah uh, we know these names could stay irrational very irrational and run extremely hard Let's check out the weekly here. Big spinning top candlestick, but it's actually gonna be looking like a big bull candlestick right now, because if it's gonna open there, it's gonna be opening right up at its wick. Really, there's no resistance on this chart until 21. Okay, you got 21, you've got 2158, and then 2460. 
and then there's a lot on the way up there. You know, it's one of those trades that it's very hard to say from a technical perspective what's going to happen. These are micro floats. It's the volume that's coming in. This move has been going on for several days. So we know shorts are all over this, bulls are all over this. It's choppy action. I would never recommend this for anybody that's never tried to play one of these before because what's going to happen is you're not going to realize one candle to the next is a 10% move. Okay, and that's very, you know, it's overwhelming if you're not used to it. You put in 10K and then boom, it's down 15% on the next candle and then it's halted and there's multiple halts on these tickers. So really I would say it's opening up in an area of lack of resistance. Next resistance isn't until 21. You know, that's 20% upside still from that range. But again, you have to use, in my opinion, these trades, you have to use low, uh, low capital. And uh, it, once it starts to go red and it's going against you, you got to cut it. No averaging down, no trying to hold in and out really quickly. If it's riding up and you caught it, like if you catch the the uptrend, then you just walk up your stop and let that baby go because we know these things could go, this thing could go to 100, right? It absolutely could. It's got 3 million uh, share float. How much of it is locked up? How much of it is free trading? Like that's what happens with these stocks. That's why you see fluctuations like this. You know, closed at 15, opened at 12, dropped all the way down to seven, eight, that's 50% drop, 50% drop, 50% drop. And here we are, yesterday closed, and now we're looking at a 50% open, just like that, right? Extreme volatile trading. GE. So I would say for the, like these tickers, um, I know Nelson's comfortable with those. If you've never done them, watch and learn, just paper trade them. Okay, so GE had a overthrow here of this rising wedge. So a beautiful move here. And it looks like it gapped up on earnings and it's a double inside bar. Sorry, it's an inside bar with tweezers in both directions. So this is a beautiful play because all you gotta do, <laughs> wow, look at that. All you gotta do is play the break, right? Play the break. So this is a beautiful equilibrium shaping up here. Let that develop a little bit more. It's coming back up wherever it sets the lower high. You know, you can try and top fish it off the lower high. You can try and top fish it off the 13 because you've left the gap behind. There is a gap behind, but you know, it could be a breakaway gap. I don't know what was in their earnings to justify a breakaway gap, but it could be. So hourly equilibrium, I would really let this just develop. And if you got in off of this low, great double bottom, you're just walking it up. And then once you start to see the curl on the hourly chart, 15 minute chart will show you, it's starting to see that curl. Then you say, hey, I'm gonna get out and look to see where the higher low is set. So as of right now, it's just an hourly equilibrium, double bottom, double top. Beautiful for an equilibrium entry play on GE. All right, it's nine o'clock, let's get going. Yang. And sorry, let me just check on one thing here on GE. This resistance here, 1325. Okay, yeah, no, it's just a little bit higher. This one over here. So if it does break down too, you could be looking for this range to come in and act as support, okay? That 12, uh, 31 range, 12, 30 range. You could be looking to see if that's gonna come in and act as support if it does break down for an entry which would be near the eight exponential moving average. Yang, what is this ticker here? Okay, oh, bear China, okay. So Bear China has obviously been roaring. It's getting a little bit choppy right now. Okay, down, up, down, up, right? Intraday action hasn't been great, but the overall trend has been roaring here. So you got your resistance right now on Yang at 48.70 and 49.30. A lot of volume coming in here, obviously now. Outside the upper volume, man. Let's see what it's doing here, <clears throat> excuse me. 4870 is our resistance. Let's check out the hourly chart here. Yeah, it's breaking up above it right now. So our resistance 4930. So it's testing 4930. You know, it's it's a good play for if China the China market's going to be in in trouble for quite a quite a long period of time. It seems this is a good play. Just let it mature. So it's one of those scenarios where intraday action is going to be a little bit choppy. But do you just let this develop? Right, three X bear. No, forget it. Don't let it develop. It's going to it's going to decay on you. There's going to be so many factors overnight. So intraday action, it's opening up bullish. 
I mean, you could be using your support over here. You could be using your support, which is going to be right there at 48.89. See if that's going to hold. If it doesn't, you don't got anything, anything till 46, 46.10. Okay. It's choppy action. Look, look, look at this range. Like this is really choppy action. 3x ETFs, they're not easy to trade, especially never easy to hold, but to trade, they're very choppy. You see moves happen overnight and then intraday action, they don't give you a lot of movement or they go the opposite direction from what they were looking at overnight. But if you're gonna play it, I would place my stop right now at 48.89. Let's check out crowd. And crowd is looking good again, right? Yeah, crowd's looking really good here. So let's check this out here. This is a beautiful move right now, okay, very notable. Beautiful higher low, looking for a breakout now, right? So if we do see that breakout, you know, we're looking, where's our target, right? We're looking for a move to that 127 range, right? 127.20, which brings us to 77.85. There is some resistances, of course, along the way that we've got to get over. First one, we've got to break that 64.04. And then there's nothing until 69 and 72. Okay, so I would at least be looking for a move to 73 if we could break this 64. You know, it's gonna take time, it's gonna take time to develop, but big bull volume, nice consolidation, boom, breaking back up, bull volume starting to come in again, a little bit of increasing bull volume. So that's what we wanna do, we wanna break that 64.04. I like this play, I like this play. Upper bond Japan is open, everything's cooled off nicely here, still got huge volume telling us there's gonna be likely some more upside. This is looking really good. And you got a lower trend line now that is acting as support, right? See that there? It's not perfect, actually. Let me just double check this here on a line chart. Yeah, it's there. So you could be watching this lower trend line as well to be acting as your support. So if we do not break, you know, break our resistance, we come back down and see if we can bounce off of it. Overall, this chart's looking really good. Really good right now. BTC, BTC, USDT. Okay, let's check it out here. And let's look at this. So obviously this BTC had a huge breakout from that long-term pattern, right? It had the long-term pattern. We were watching basically, you know, where was it here? I think it was like a little bit in that range broke out. It's seeing a nice breakout here and the chart's looking really good. And it's like a bull flag right now. So it's walking up stops beautifully. So it's support, support. And now you want to hold that support right over there. 9210. It is a bull flag right now. You want to see it break up to the upside. Let's look at some indicators here. I never really look at these, but let's check it out. So eight exponential, it's still been riding the eight exponential and upper bond Japan here. We're in a little bit of an overbought condition. Let's check it out. Yeah, everything's looking good. These, there's three lower wicks right here in this range. You could tell bulls are trying to buy the dip off of 9204. If you lose 9204, you run into a lack of, you know, lack of, and it's trying to hold there. See that? Previous resistance is acting as support. That's what's happening here at this 9200 range. Look at this, it's wicking like right off of this level. So if you lose that, then you really you're just looking for a higher low somewhere above that 8238 range. I don't really play BTC. I don't watch this chart, but you know, you just look at it from a general indicator perspective. You got the RSI trend line that is holding as well. So you can see that here. We've got multiple touches. One, two, three. Does it go even further? No. So we've got three touches. It is curling. Could see here if it comes back and back test off of it again. That range is acting as resistance. If you do break out to new highs here, if you do break out over 95.78, there's nothing. Well, there's a little bit of something at. 99, 9900, and then you look at that 1037 range. Looking really strong. Worst case, if this is a fake out, you're looking at a head and shoulders pattern with the head starting to form right now. So you got your left shoulder right here, you got your head starting to form, and then you look for that right shoulder. So if you break this, if you break this support and you come back down, watch for the right shoulder to come in and form. Maxar, let's check out Maxar here on the US side. Let's take a look here. So, okay, so dip buy started to happen yesterday. So we were thinking in this range, come back into this range 
and it still could happen. There is a big upper wick. It still needs to get up over this trend line. The trend line is going to be key to break up over it. And we closed yesterday at 1709. Let's just check out what we're trading at right now. 1724. So it's pretty much flat. Watch this trend line overall. This upper trend line here. That's the level that needs to break. Let's zoom in here. Check it out on the hourly. See what that looks like. You know, on the hourly, you're going to be looking in this range, which is going to be a break of this resistance here on the hourly. That's the level I'd be watching right now, which is 1780. You got some support over here at 1671 and some support at 1655. You need to break this trend line in order to get going to the upside. Without it, it's not. It's going to continue to push down further and there's a gap below. And that's where I'd be you know, interested personally on the gap fill. If it doesn't get there, it's because it's going to break this trend line. It needs to break 1780. That's the level to watch. RAD. This chart was break a breakout chart before, right? So this was a breakout chart before, and it is it breaking out right now again. Is that why? Twelve thirty-seven. No, not really. So long period of consolidation. These charts what kind of float. Does this chart have fifty-four million? These charts. That's what happens, right? You see the huge move to the upside, massive period of consolidation, and then eventually you do get another big break to the upside. It does come, so you could potentially be looking for that overall right now. You got your support at eleven fifty-two, almost like a double bottom, eleven thirty-six, and then you got the gap below. Below ten ninety-six is a gap. Overall, right now this chart did just break a little bit of a key resistance level here. You can see that that trend line. It did just break it here. Let's go see what that looks like on the hourly chart. And let's take that off. So right about there, it's just cracking it right now. You can see that this was pushing it down for a significant period of time, almost like a descending triangle. It did get a break. You could potentially be looking for a back test of this trend line. Let's see what that looks like on a line chart so you can have a clear level. Even if we go from now, let's go right here. Let's go right there. Let me just fix this up here. I'd go into a back test of that $12 range if it's not just going to continue to run from here. That's what I'd be watching overall. Resistance is this bull flag that you got right now. You want to break up over here, which is going to be 1250. You are shaping up a bull flag on this move, on this breakout. Nice doji candlestick. Nice for continuation. If you do break that bull flag, you got a little bit of resistance coming up at 1279. And then you got resistance over here at this double top at 1291 so then you can start looking into the 13s notable break of that big trend line that's been pushing it down uh, iipr and then we're going to do twlo and then we're going to wrap it up and all right let's go here and look at iipr looking at this here setting up a bull flag here on the daily so this is looking pretty good let's see how extended we are on this chart right now so we are outside the upper boundary band. We could ride the upper boundary band. Great. We broke to 100. We broke to 200. Beautiful. Nice. We actually wicked off of the 200 as well. This chart is looking extremely strong right now. IIPR is looking really good here. And it did, it did wick right now off of this previous resistance at 92.83. Our resistance is up over here at 96.76 and then 98.80. And then there's really a lack of resistance. You get over $100 psychological, it's going to look pretty good. It is a bull flag right now. It is a little bit extended, but it is a bull flag decreasing bear volume, no bear volume. Now, yesterday we saw a little bit of continuation and got a little bit of a push down. So I'd be a little bit cautious that you see a new move up and you get another push down because there's some upper wicks forming in this range. You know, people that got in here, you know, they're starting to take some profits, right? So you have to be cautious that this is a no buy zone. It's a distribution zone. If you're in, great. You can let it mature. And let's check out what it looks like on the hourly. So you can see the hourly, these wicks, it's trying to go and it's starting to get some upper wicks. A little bit of caution, you know. Potentially this chart could fold and come back down. And then you're looking for a back test of the eight exponential, which brings us all the way to that 87 range. If you're in this chart, it's looking good. I'd be, you know, using a stop right over here off of this, off of this level. 9076. Even if you want to be a little bit tighter, I would use that 9294. If you're not in, you get a break of your resistance at 95.26. You're basically confirming the bull flag, but you want to see volume on the break to confirm. Otherwise, you're going to get exactly what you got there, which is a wick. It's a fake out, and it pushes you down, and it's starting to tell you that this chart's going to come back down and look for a clear daily higher low and not to buy these breakouts right now because it is 
in a zone where all these guys that are up 20% are starting to take some profits nice and tactfully. TWO, TWLO, and then we'll get started on our Friday. So TWLO, this chart's looking really good. All right, so big move here. So big move here, <clears throat> nice, nice dip buying. Your resistance zone, you're right in that resistance zone right now. You can see that, right? All these volume nodes, you're right there right now. This range, this range is gonna be a problem, right? That range is gonna be a problem. So, you know, nice move to the upside here. You know, we dumped down pretty hard so we can move through it really quickly. Dump down here, can move it through it really quickly. And our next resistance really, you know, there's still a little bit of ways till our next resistance. We got 125.78, but then really, where are we trading at right now? 124, right there, right? 126, that previous support. And then really you start looking at the daily resistance and that daily resistance is up over here at 134. So this range is gonna be choppy. This was the last distribution zone before the real breakdown. So it's gonna get choppy here. You see the high volume nodes. Earnings are coming up. So we could watch that. It could potentially just trade sideways into earnings. I'd watch for it to get, you know, it was a nice move here. And now in this range, it, it got a little bit choppy, breakdown, starting to come back up. But I would anticipate some, some challenges right here in this range right now. So really, if you're in, great. You're just placing your stop. I'd place it right over there at 121.66. If you're not in, you play the breakout of 125.78. Watch that 126.42. Uh, you could absolutely run into that 130 level. You could start to get into these high volume nodes here and then tr trade in that range and still give you a nice little decent trade. Let's just zoom in here, check out the hourly chart really quickly. And it looks like we got a little bit of a channel here as well. Okay, let's look at that here. We've got a little bit of a channel here as well that you could be watching right there, right? Let's watch this here. So right in that range, you could be watching to see if this channel continues to develop on the hourly chart. And it looks like there's a little bit of an upper trend line of resistance here. Let's take a look at this perfectly in that range. So you see here one rejection, two rejections, three rejections. We come up to that. Watch if you reject it again, then you know you're gonna come back and back test the bottom of this channel. That's it guys. Have a great day everybody. Hope you have a great weekend. Peace.